What's going on y'all? Welcome back to Harry the Horse Barbecue and today we are making a classic steakhouse dinner. That's right, we are taking the steakhouse classic of meat, potatoes, and a fancy green vegetable and we're making it at home. Super simple, super easy, and above all, super delicious. Let's get it. Harry the Horse Barbecue. Hey you. Yeah, you. Have you been wanting to take that special someone out to a fancy steak restaurant, but you don't got the cheddar to do it? Well, boy, oh boy, do I have your problem solved. We are going to be making a classic steakhouse dinner, super easy at home and better than what you're gonna find at most steakhouses, especially those silly chain restaurant steakhouses. Today, we are going to be cooking up a classic bone-in, two-inch thick ribeye steak some awesome, beautiful asparagus, and some really creamy, really delicious roasted garlic mashed potatoes, AKA Rocky Mountain mashed potatoes. Now growing up, my family used to visit a steakhouse called Schlesinger's, and that steakhouse was like the creme de la creme of steakhouses, at least we thought so. It was overpriced, pretty decent quality, but a place we would only go to on special occasions. You would never dare to order the steak because it was on the order of like 40 bucks. I was able to get the steak one time and it was high quality meat, but not very seasoned. But I remember going there raving about the Rocky Mountain mashed potatoes. It was a staple every time we went. Now with the thought of this steakhouse in mind, I'm going to be making a super delicious ribeye steak, Rocky Mountain mashed potatoes with some roasted garlic and some quick and easy sauteed asparagus. This is something you could do for a weeknight cook, for a special occasion, or if you're just feeling fat and happy like me. The first thing we gotta do to get this meal in order is to dry brine our steak. Dry brine is just fancy talk for seasoning with salt. So let me take you back to last night where I seasoned this dry aged bone-in ribeye steak from Porter Road. And after an overnight dry brine, we're gonna hit the PK grill for a quick reverse sear method. Let's take you rewind. Now, in order to make our classic steakhouse dinner, we gotta go shopping for a really nice steak. Let's see what we can find. Hmm, this looks like a pretty good steak. Just look at this gargantuan mammoth-sized steak. This looks amazing. Now to make our classic steakhouse dinner, we gotta start with a super premium steak, which is why I went with a thick cut, dry aged ribeye steak. We all know that this is the king of steaks. Some other classic steakhouse cuts could be a filet mignon, a porterhouse steak, New York strip, but there's nothing that beats a fatty, juicy, thick cut ribeye. This beast is about two inches thick, weighing in at about two pounds. High quality steakhouses are always choosing great cuts of meat and they're always cutting them thick. Now one key step to make a classic steakhouse style steak is to dry brine this. We are going to hit this with some diamond crystal kosher salt and let it sit overnight so that way we get full salt penetration so that way it's seasoned beautifully throughout the meat. Let's salt this steak. Got like a plastic diaper on. Take a looky loo at this steak. Oh man. Now you may be saying to yourself, Mr. Horse, why are you putting so much salt on your steak? Because I want to. I like doing stuff like this. This steak is seriously salted with that diamond crystal kosher salt. All that's left to do is put it to bed. Catch y'all in the morning. I forgot to say, let's go fire up the PK. coals nice and lit, then we're gonna reverse sear that steak. Ooh. 
We'll close it down, then we'll get our steak on. Let's let the PK get hot. For our Rocky Mountain mashed potatoes, I want to elevate them to the next level by incorporating some roasted garlic. And this could not be easier to do. All I'm going to do is take this head of garlic, cut it open, foil, olive oil, some kosher salt, and some fresh cracked black pepper. Tie it up in a neat little package. Pop this into a 400 degree oven for I'm estimating about 30 to 45 minutes. Pop! Believe it or not, this is the biggest pot I have. So this will obviously be a small batch of some Rocky Mountain mashed potatoes, but you could take the basis of this recipe and make it your own in a larger quantity. They're always gonna come out super delicious. You can't go wrong. I've just got two yellow potatoes here. I'm just gonna chop, chop, then in the pot. I wish I had a bigger pot. Cover these with some water and let them boil. Those potatoes are bubbling. Garlic's are roasting. Let's go check on the PK grill. See if it's lit. Ah! All right, y'all, the PK's hot. Let's go get our dry brined, super thick cut ribeye. It just snowed and those steps are super snowy, so here goes nothing. Dry age, thick cut, steakhouse ribeye time. Look how thick that bad boy is. Let's get it on. Up and under. I'm gonna put the fat towards the fire. I'm gonna take a little piece of cherry wood and add it to the fire. Hey, do a little fire dance. And we're gonna rock this ribeye until it reaches an internal of about 115. We're gonna sear it super hot, super quick over those coals and get a super crusty exterior for our ultimate steakhouse steak. Let's close her down. Boom, shakalaka. Our potatoes are done. Let's scoop them into our bowl and mash them to the best of our ability. Get a nice potato facial. Little kosher salt. Some fresh cracked black pepper. A splash or two of heavy cream. An easy two tablespoons of butter. About two tablespoons of sour cream. Doesn't that just look like the creamiest set of Rocky Mountain mash you've ever seen? Let's give this a taste test. Mmm, it's actually really good. This is awesome, but it's missing one major thing. That's that roasted garlic. Let's get it out of the oven. Nice. Mmm, nice and roasty toasty. This garlic's hot. Ouch! Mix that garlic in there. Ooh, -hoo. this is done. Whoa, for our asparagus, it couldn't be simpler. Quick trick, bend one. That's where it breaks. That's the natural point that you want to cut off. Done deal. We only need a few things for this asparagus because we want it to be as clean, crisp, and refreshing as possible. Our made in pan. Olive oil. Salt, pepper, garlic, onion. Give that a mix around. Saute this until they're really nice and tender. Then we're gonna hit them with a little lemon at the end to brighten it up onto the stove. Let's go check on that steak. Our steak's at an internal of a little over 90 degrees, so I'm going to start throwing it over the flame. That's a fat boy steak. Let's finish our asparagus with some nice lemon juice. 
A quick horseradish cream sauce would be great with this. Equal parts mayonnaise and sour cream. Some prepared horseradish, as little or as much as you'd like. That looks about good. Black pepper, a little salt, and some lemon juice. Let's plate this up. Our beloved, beautiful, thick cut ribeye. Oh, looking crusty and delicious. Rocky Mountain Mash is an appropriate name for this mountain of potatoes. Some of our beautiful asparagus. That horseradish cream. This steakhouse dinner is making me hungry. Mmm! Let's get after a little of this mash. This mash is not trash. Oh, it's so creamy and that garlic, that roasted garlic flavor has such a sweet nuttiness to it. The cream and the butter really make it silky and luxurious. So amazing. Let's brighten it up with a little asparagus. Oh yeah. Yup, yup, yup. It's nice and sauteed, a little char from the made-in pan. Salty, peppery, and that brightness from the lemon cuts right through all of that. We're just gonna have to go right through this. Oh, ho, ho. would you take a looky-loo at that? Man, that reverse sear did some work. Beautiful edge-to-edge, -edge, medium rare. Smelling smoky. Let's get after this cap a little bit. Oh yeah, that is looking good. Just a little dabble, do ya? Mm! That might have been one of the best bites of steak I've ever taken in my entire life. Hello. O-M-G-Z, that is good. Oops, oops, oops. Gotta eat your greens. Those taters are slapping. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, steak, okay, greens, okay, taters, taters, taters. You wish you could go to a steakhouse and get something this good. This is out of bounds, so good, so delicious. I'm impressed. This dry aged steak from Porter Road was not horsing around. With a little planning, a little preparation, this meal can come together super quick. Plus you're gonna have leftovers, that's the best part. But this meal is so good, I just can't stop. Steak, little swuss, taters on there, steak dinner and a bite. Thank you guys for tuning in to Harry the Horse Barbecue. I really appreciate you checking out this video. When it comes to a steakhouse dinner, you don't need to go out and spend a ton of money. You could do this from the ease of your home with a few tips, tricks, and techniques that will really help you master this in your own home. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. I know you want to do it, so hit that subscribe button. Hit it. Just like how that steakhouse bill will be hitting your wallet if you don't do this. You know we got that crispy, crusty bark on the exterior of that ribeye, so you gotta slap that like button. If you like this content, you like what we're doing, make sure you hit that notification bell so you are notified every time I'm posting new content. Everybody wants those noties. Leave a comment down below if you think I did the steakhouse dinner justice. Or what is your favorite steakhouse dinner? Is it a ribeye? Do you go for the Rocky Mountain mash? Let me know in the comments below. You can follow me on Instagram at HarryTheHorseBarbecue and tag me so I can see what y'all are cooking because it inspires me to get outside and cook. And just one more thing, y'all. This one's going straight to the horse's mouth. We'll catch y'all in the next one. Peace!